When you get to the point in your life where you're buying a compact crossover, you probably expect that it's going to be a pretty dull vehicle. Okay, ridiculously practical, of course, but probably with ho-hum styling and a pretty anodyne driving experience. That's fine for most drivers, but some buyers want a little more fun. If that's you, take a look at the Kia Sportage. From its design to the way it drives, it's way more on the fun and excitement side of this compact crossover segment. Now, that really appeals to someone like me, but it does come at the expense of some practical aspects. So the question for shoppers is whether the Sportage provides the right balance of style and sensibility for their needs. How does it look? The Sportage looks cool. It's definitely a different and unusual look in a sea of very samey crossovers. But I like the funkiness of the front end, the giant grille, the LED running lights, and the dual exhausts. All-wheel drive models like this one sit about half an inch higher and have a unique front end with a fake skid plate, which looks kind of tough, even if the improved clearance will only come in handy when, say, dealing with deep snow. I also really appreciate that Kia offers this somewhat unusual burnished copper color. So many of its rivals are only offered in silvers and blacks and grays. How's the storage? The actual cargo capacity isn't class leading, although it's a lot roomier than the old Sportage's trunk, and the trunk is really wide and deep. Now, the other good thing is that the liftover height's about two inches lower than in the old Sportage, so it's a lot easier to get things in and out, and the back seats easily fold completely flat for even more storage. Inside, there's a roomy covered compartment in the center console, two cup holders, and several little cubbies for storing your phone or other small objects. The door pockets are pretty big too for carrying all your tasty hydration necessities. Is it roomy? Absolutely no complaints from up front, where there's plenty of adjustment range for the seat and steering wheel. Even with this optional panoramic sunroof, I've got lots of headroom too. The rear seats aren't bad at all either, and it's nice that they recline so you can find a comfortable angle. How does the interior feel? There are a lot of really nice soft touch materials in here, and I really like that all the controls and switches have a lovely tactile feel. Now this isn't the most beautiful interior you can get in the segment, but I do think that it's really pretty good. Is it well equipped? Equipment on this car includes blind spot and lane departure warnings, pre-collision braking, heated and cooled leather seats, a heated steering wheel, the giant sunroof, and so on. All-wheel drive models even have a four-wheel drive lock switch and hill descent control, both of which seem excessive for, you know, a Kia Sportage. But the good news is that most of these features that we like on the SX can also be had on the more affordable Sportage EX. How's the infotainment system? This 8-inch infotainment system is great, with bright graphics, lots of functionality, and easy-to-use physical shortcut buttons. I really like using this system and have no complaints about it at all. Yes, it will do Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and it also supports Kia's UVO telematics functions. One cool feature, which is available on some other cars too, is a sort of DVR mode for the satellite radio. You can rewind any station you have set as a preset, so when your favorite Megan Trainor song comes on, you can skip back to hear every single note. Is it a good daily driver? As a daily driver, I don't have many complaints about the Sportage. One thing I really notice is there's a lot of visibility. Key engineers specifically made the pillars narrower so you can see out more easily. Now, compared to some of its competition, it is a little noisier. There's a little more wind noise on the highway and the ride is on the stiff side. And one other thing that I don't love is that sometimes the throttle tip in is just a little bit lethargic when you first pull away from a stop. Is it fun to drive? I'm driving the Sportage SX Turbo, which is the top of the line model, and it comes with a 237 horsepower, two liter turbo engine. So it's a lot quicker than some of its competition. But the SX Turbo also gets 19 inch wheels, retuned suspension, a flat bottom steering wheel, paddle shifters, 
I really like throwing it into sport mode and it really kind of encourages you to play with it and have a little bit of fun. It's taut and pretty composed through turns. Now, I still think that the most fun to drive crossover in the class is the Mazda CX-5, but the Sportage is a really good runner-up. How's the fuel economy? Ah, right. The turbocharged engine is thirsty, especially with all-wheel drive, which adds about 100 pounds of weight compared to the front drive version. This particular Sportage gets 20 miles per gallon city and 23 highway, which is miserable for a compact family crossover, even rival ones with 2.0-liter turbo engines. Now, if you stick to the LX or EX with the 181 horsepower non-turbo engine, you'll get as much as 23 miles per gallon city and 30 miles per gallon highway, but that's still far from best in class. How much is it? This all-wheel drive SX Turbo model rings in at $35,000, which is definitely at the top of the range we expect to pay for crossovers like this. If you're okay with the base engine, the Sportage LX starts at $24,000 and the EX all-wheel drive is $28,000, so roughly what you'd pay for similar crossovers from other manufacturers. What are the negatives? If you buy your cars based on a spreadsheet of objective numbers, the Kia Sportage isn't going to come up tops. Fuel economy is not the best in its class, and nor are the trunk space or back seat space. And while this SX model has a great engine and great suspension and it looks really cool, you won't get those things on the more affordable LX and EX models. Who should buy it? The Sportage is great for someone like me who values style and a fun to drive character, even if it comes at the expense of a little bit of practicality. It's definitely the cool hip outlier in the compact crossover segment, and that kind of makes me like it even more. It definitely makes sense if you want to stand out from every other SUV on the road. But only you can decide if that's worth it, given all the trade-offs you have to make in terms of practicality. If you liked this Why Buy video, don't forget we've got a new one every Thursday, so don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see them all. You can also leave us a comment below to let us know what you'd like to see in future Why Buy videos. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and you can visit motorone.com.